All right, so uh, welcome back to Fundum Friday. Uh, this time it's not about funding, it's just about fun. How did you like that? The office is open now, so everyone gets to hear my terrible jokes. Okay, so um, we ha we're doing a hack day for Halloween here. It's Friday the 13th, we're coming up on Halloween. It's amazing, so uh, I awesome colleague Maggie put together this hack day. And uh, one question that I got was, what is a PCB? Everyone says that you need to have them, they're cool, they're great, PCBs are essential for electronics, etc. What is it? What does it do? Why do you need it? Okay, a PCB, PCB stands for printed circuit board. And what that means is that a circuit is printed onto a board. That's not very helpful, is it? Okay, so you start out with this fiberglass board, uh, and then it is usually covered with copper on both sides. Uh, called copper clad board. You can start building a circuit that way uh, simply by removing copper either with a chemical etchant or with a mill uh, physically removing copper to leave traces behind that work like wires. All a PCB is is a series of holes and uh, solder pads and then wires that connect them. So it's sort of like a super specialized breadboard Instead of plugging wires into holes on the breadboard, you stick components into the, um, the PCB and then they're already wired together. Uh, so for example, uh, yeah, and then, and the, you know, so you can start out with a copper clad board that has copper all the way on both sides and then remove that to create traces, or you can do uh, what Oshpark does, which is start out with the fiberglass and then um, you add pores, and uh, which is this big area here underneath the purple solder mask, uh, and traces, which is the little lines you see here, which is basically like wires. Uh, these buttons are also pores. So in the middle you have this fiberglass layer. On top of that, maybe you have a pour of copper. Uh, often there's going to be a big ground pour uh, for the ground connections, and they all like plug into that. Uh, over that you usually have the solder mask, which is this purple stuff, Osh Park, has a signature purple color. Uh, and then you'll also have um, silk screening on top of that, which is this white stuff, uh, usually used for labels. Osh Parks are kind of special because Drew especially likes to play around with uh, how you make these. So, for example, up here, you can see that it's a little darker and a little shallower. That's because there's no copper underneath there. And that's just a stylistic thing. He's got the letters done in copper with no solder mask on top, so they're nice and shiny, uh, but there's no copper underneath. Um, same down here. And over here you've got silk screening on top of the PCB. Um, let's see. And so then uh, after you apply the components, this is what your final circuit looks like. So you've got a teensy plugged in here actually as well. Uh, but then there's these headers that are soldered through uh, you can see because they're sticking out on the other side, and then this screen, uh, you've got some surface mount components here as well. Uh, so, what is surface mount versus through hole? Uh, there are different ways of attaching components to PCBs. So, for example, some kits that you will get, a lot of them will be through hole soldering, which means that they ho have holes all the way through, and then you take an LED or whatever, uh, stick it through the holes in the PCB, solder it on, and then cut those legs off. Uh, it's not as, as cruel as it sounds. And um, then you get something like this. And you can solder from both sides, either way, it uh, doesn't really matter. And then you also have surface mount ones, which basically instead of having holes all the way through, or maybe in addition to that, they also have little pads on the surface uh, that you place a, uh, an object on top of, and it doesn't go all the way through the PCB. Um, let's see, where's a better example? You can kind of see more clearly. Uh, rah, rah. Well, here, okay, here's this SMD challenge uh, kit, which is really cool. Uh, as you can see, there's all these little shiny pads of exposed metal, and that's what you solder to. The solder mask keeps the solder from sticking to the rest of the circuit, keeps the uh, connections from shorting together, uh, and it keeps everything from shorting out, basically. Uh, and then you have the exposed copper. You can kind of see the traces underneath here. You got my focus in, in line. <laughs> uh, and then these are all the little components that you would apply. 
uh, you're gonna, I did a, a, an introduction to surface mount soldering recently, and I'll put the link for that underneath this video. Uh, but you'll often get components on little paper tapes and stuff, and they're, they're stuck into these holes in the card. Uh, so these teeny tiny little resistors and LEDs and stuff, um, as well as chips and things will come on these tapes and you cut them apart. Uh, and then you just apply them with tweezers on top of solder uh, paste. And then when you have a through hole kit, like I was mentioning before, uh, you'll just stick the components through here according to the schematic or the directions or just the markings on here. Uh, and then you'll solder it together. So why do we use PCBs? Because they're cool, they're stylistic, because it makes it so that you can have just a circuit that you can, you can turn into part of a product or whatever. Uh, a PCB is going to be the basic building block of most commercial products. Uh, and so, for example, an Arduino is a PCB with a bunch of stuff soldered onto it and through it. So, for example, these headers are soldered through hole. Uh, you can see that they were stuck through the PCB and then soldered. And then you have a bunch of teeny tiny little resistors and capacitors and whatnots that are just stuck onto the surface and they don't actually go through. However, there are also things called vias that go all the way through the PCB and those connect both sides. So if you have a plane over here, like a ground plane over here and a ground plane over here, you might connect those with vias. Uh, you can also have multi-layer PCBs, which is like boss mode. So then you can have like up to 16 layers, I've heard. Um, so this is a single or double layer PCB. Uh, I gotta check that, what exactly the terminology is. But basically, on top of this, you would have no solder mask over here. You would have another layer of fiberglass, and then more copper, more fiberglass, more copper, until you get to the other side, and then there's going to be solder mask and stuff again. And those are much more complex to design, and you can't mill those out by hand because, uh, yeah, you you'd, you'd have to get the bit in between the you know, the layers of the stuff, and it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> um, so I hope this helps elucidate what some of the deal is with PCBs. Um, we've also got this example uh, PCB ruler. It's a pretty popular project. I've seen at least like four of these. And, uh, you know, it shows different pitches, i.e. sizes of holes and spacings of, um, here we go, spacings of uh, little, like, chip legs or whatever. Um, You've got examples of what it looks like when there's no copper underneath the solder mask. Uh, Oshpark has a lot of really cool... Ooh, you know what? I have some more of these. Oh, here, hold on one sec. I forgot the big giant cool PCB that I have. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh. I forgot I remembered to bring this. I'm so excited. You guys are going to love this. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. And then there's the Fenderino, which is ridiculous. So this is an Arduino shield, which is a PCB that you solder together. Look at that! This is a through-hole soldering kit that you can get online. Um, and you just plug an Arduino into the back of it. So every Arduino, every Arduino shield, etc., is a PCB with stuff on it. Um, whether the, you add that stuff yourself or it comes pre-assembled, uh, you can also create your own PCBs and order them pre-assembled. Um, which is pretty, you know, relatively expensive unless you're doing like a huge run of them. It's a great way to make kits and stuff. There's this group called Lumen that makes these beautiful jewelry PCBs. And here you can see they've got some kind of a clear finish, which just seems to be like a resin, an epoxy resin. But uh, all this yellow stuff is exposed fiberglass. Uh, and then the purple stuff is solder mask and the shiny stuff is copper. Pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, I got all these from Drew Fustini of Oshpark who couldn't bring them back with him from uh, Open Hardware Summit. And yeah, I've been really excited to share these with you. So what else have we got in here? Oh yeah, there's some really cool like test pieces that Oshpark puts out. Um, I showed everyone the shuriken before from Great Scott Gadgets uh, from Michael Osman. But uh, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's a through hole kit, as you can see, because there's these big um, things all the way through, big holes. Here's a cool art PCB. I didn't catch the name of who does these, 
but they're playing with a lack of solder mask or anything on the fiberglass over here. The back of it is also plain. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, although you could make it do something. Uh, these little, you know, copper areas, uh, some solder mask that's purple, and then some white silk screening on the top. Uh, and then here's a cool sort of example thing with what it looks like. Um, you can actually get the light to shine through if you don't pour copper or solder mask. Um, or if you pour solder mask but not copper, uh, as long as the copper is not on there, some light will permeate through. Uh, and so you'll get these effects of like light shining through, which is pretty cool sometimes. You can do it with this one too. Uh, oh no! dropping things. <laughs> and so yeah, this has got copper and solder mask and silk screening. Very cool. Um, if you have any questions about PCBs, there's lots more that can be talked about. Uh, Drew, for example, has shown how some Oshpark PCBs will fluoresce green under UV light and some will fluoresce blue uh, because the substrate, the middle stuff, uh, like fiberglass or whatever, um, it's not always fiberglass, and also it, uh, you know, if you have a four-layer versus a two-layer PCB, they may be made out of different things and fluoresce different colors, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more live soldering of these kits in the near future, so stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I hope this has been illuminating. Uh, yeah, PCBs are a great way to level up your project once you want to make it more permanent. I hate breadboards, I love PCBs, but uh, you can also just solder stuff together uh, in a dead bug fashion. That's if you just solder things directly together, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, it works pretty well depending on what you're doing. And you can also make pigtails, which is like um, wires that are sort of bunched together into a port at one end so you can just plug stuff together. Uh, lots of cool stuff that you can do depending on what the aesthetic of your project is, how much you intend to distribute it, if you want to sell it, if you want it to be a final product that lasts for 50 years, or just be like a hack that you can like desolder at any time and swap out components and whatever. Uh, yeah, hopefully this has been, been interesting and useful and stuff. Uh, shoot us any more questions. I may or may not be able to answer them, but I bet you I can ask Drew about them and he'll just know everything. Um, yeah, so check this stuff out. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend and happy Friday the 13th and Halloween and stuff. <laughs> Have a great one. So quick addendum to our PCB video that we just did. Um, how do you make a PCB? I forgot to address this. Uh, yeah, so there are a number of different programs that are designed for this. There's a browser-based one called Upverter. There's uh, also Autodesk Eagle. Uh, the old Eagle software that's been around for ages has been acquired by Autodesk. Likewise, Altium has just acquired Upverter. Altium is another really powerful one that includes like 3D modeling of your circuit. Uh, there's Circuit Maker, also by Altium, which is like a Windows-based one. KiCad is completely open source and free, which is makes it like a preferred um, uh, CAD tool of choice for many people who make PCBs. And uh, yeah, you can use whatever works for you. Uh, yeah, different people have plenty of tutorials out there for each one. So uh, for KiCad, we recommend getting to Blinky. There are two versions by Chris Gamble. Uh, and SparkFun has a great one on an introduction to Eagle. Uh, yeah, but just snoop around and see what works for you. Thanks for watching.